Okay, in this problem, we're asked to verify that our surface, our level surface E, defined by y minus x e to the z plus z e to the x equals zero, defines z as a function of x and y near the point p equals negative one zero negative one, and then we're asked to find a tangent plane to e at our point p. In the, fo in the following form, z equals c plus a times the quantity x minus a plus b times the quantity y minus b. And so first we want to verify that we can write z as a function of x and y. So first We'll define our function f of x, y, z as y minus x e to the z plus z e to the x. We'll verify that our point P is actually on the level surface that we're looking at. So f of P is equal to 0. So f of p is equal to 0 plus e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative 1, which is 0. And then we check that that's our level surface, which it is. So we know that our point p is on our surface. And now we want to make sure that at our point p, uh, we can define z as a function of x and y implicitly. So that's going to occur. if our partial derivative of f with respect to z is non-zero. So we'll calculate our partial derivative. And we get the partial derivative of f with respect to z is negative x e to the z plus e to the x. And we're going to evaluate that at p. And we get e to the negative 1 plus e to the negative 1, which is equal to 2e to the negative 1. So obviously, 2e to the negative 1 is not equal to 0. So that means we can implicitly define z as a function of x and y. And now we want to find an equation for the tangent plane. So our form is. So our a, b, and c, our lowercase a, b, and c, are going to be our point p in our x, y, and z coordinates. So we have negative 1, so we have z is equal to negative 1 plus a times the quantity x plus 1 plus b times y. Okay, and we want to find a and b, which we know to be the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the partial derivative of z with respect to y, respectively. And since our partial derivative of f with respect to z at p is non-zero. And these are both evaluated at our point p. Since we know that our partial derivative of f with respect to z at p is non-zero, then the implicit function theorem tells us that these values are given to us as negation of partial derivative of f with respect to z, x over the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And then likewise, the 
the negation of the partial derivative of f with respect to y over the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And again, all of these are evaluated at our point p. So we have our partial derivative of f with respect to z already. We just need to calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to x and the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And we'll go ahead and do that just by taking the gradient of our function f. So So I plugged in our um, partial derivative of f with respect to z already evaluated at p. So x still needs to be evaluated at p. Um, but we have our gradient of f is equal to negative e to the z plus z e to the x. Uh, our partial derivative of f with respect to y is 1. And as we calculated earlier, our partial derivative of f with respect to z is 2e to the negative 1. Plugging in for our, um, at our point p, we get our x component is a negative 2e to the negative 1. and we get our gradient vector. So we can go ahead and use those components to determine our a and b values, which will then determine our tangent plane. So we have our a term is negative negative 2e to the negative 1, so just positive 2e to the negative 1 over 2e to the negative 1, which is 1. And for our b value, we get negative 1 over 2e to the negative 1, which is the same thing as negative 1 half times e. And so we have our a and b terms. So we can go ahead and plug into our equation for the tangent plane. And we get that z is equal to negative 1 plus x plus 1 minus 1 half e times y. And we can simplify that even a little bit. And we get our tangent plane is z equals x minus 1 half times e times y. 